Hey there, Yogi. My name is Crystal Gray. I'm the creator of the Yoga Goddess Academy, and I help women to transform their lives and the lives of others around them through the power of yoga. Today, we'll be going over a grounding yoga flow that'll really help you to ward off anxiety that tends to come around the holiday season, especially around people that are our loved ones, yes, but might cause us some stress. That's okay, there's nothing wrong with it. So this practice will really help you with that. I've had a lot of requests for this in my Facebook group, the Yoga Goddess Collective. So if you want a little bit more support on your journey besides these videos, please join us over there on Facebook. Grab your mat, grab your favorite kitty if you've got one, and I'll see you on your mat. Have a great practice. Start on your hands and knees and bring your knees as wide as your mat. Your big toes can touch each other. Sink your hips back towards your heels as far as they go comfortably and then place your forehead either onto the mat or stack your fists and place your forehead onto the top fist for child's pose. Breathe here. Take a couple breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just really starting to get present in your practice, present in the moment. Letting go of anything that's been on your mind. Just starting that process now. And then start breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. If this pose gets uncomfortable, please feel free to come out of it or just lift your hips up slightly. As you breathe here, really think about expanding the rib cage with the breath. Maybe you can expand the belly first on the inhale and then bring that breath into the rib cage, expanding the front and back of the ribs. And as you exhale completely, just soften into the pose, feeling yourself ground down into the earth. I really like the head to be resting on something, the forehead. So make sure that you can do that if possible. Good. And on your inhale, think, I am grounded. Exhale and act from a place of love. On the inhale, I am grounded. Exhale and act from a place of love. A lot of times during the holidays or family gatherings, we can let people kind of throw, off, throw us off our center and we can react instead of act how we really wish we would have. So getting grounded so that you can act from a place of love. Good. And then slowly make your way up to your hands and knees. You can gently open your eyes. And bring your knees back towards each other so that the knees are directly under the hips and the wrists are directly under the shoulders. Good. As you inhale, start to look out in front of you. Draw the chest forward and the shoulders back. And then exhale, round the back for cat pose. Inhale, look out, lifting the tailbone up towards the sky. And then exhale, point the tailbone down towards the earth. Inhale, look out, cow pose. Exhale, round the back, cat, push into the hands. Do a couple more, going with your breath. So linking the movement to the breath. Last one. Great, and then come back to the hands and knees. Now we'll just do a gentle puppy dog pose or Anahatasana, opening up the heart chakra a little bit here. The last one did as well, but have the hips right above the knees and walk the hands out in front of you. Let the upper body melt down towards the mat. Forehead comes down to the ground. Breathe here, softening the upper back, softening the heart. So really working today on the root chakra, and the heart chakra, getting grounded and opening up to love, getting in alignment. Let the face relax. Just doing these poses to the best of your ability without causing pain. 
and then use your abs and slowly rise back up to the hands and knees. All right, now spread your fingers apart as far as you can comfortably and keep the knuckles really grounding down into the mat. Pointer fingers point straight forward. Walk the knees back a couple of inches and curl the toes under. Start to lift the hips up. Now push into the knuckles and send the hips up and back. So you're in a straight line from the wrists all the way up to the hips. Breathe here, rolling the upper arm, so up by the shoulders, roll those away from each other. That'll broaden the upper back and then roll the forearms in, keeping the knuckles heavy. Now for this first one, let's walk the dog, push one heel down and then the other heel down. If you hear any funny noises, my kitty, I think, is just off screen, really giving himself a pretty good bath. So just to let you know. Good, okay, now come back down to the hands and knees and then stand tall on the knees. Bring your right knee in front of you. And I like to keep the back toes curled under because it feels better on my back knee, but it's up to you. You can uncurl it as well. Now lengthen the tailbone down so your pelvis is neutral. That just means your booty's not popping out, the tailbone's not tucking under. And then push the right knee forward as far as you can go without letting the booty pop out. Bring your hands together to your heart or arms up and wrap the shoulders just like we did and down dog, roll the shoulders away from each other and breathe here. Relax the face. Inhale, I am grounded. Exhale and act from a place of love. At any time, please feel free to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth, taking a cleansing breath. Awesome, now bring the left hand down and the right hand to the right knee. Walk the right foot over a couple inches and maybe even bring the left knee back. Turn the right toes out slightly and keep the right knee directly on top of the ankle. Don't let it go past and have the knee pointing in the same direction as the toes. On your inhale, reach your heart towards the front of your mat and then exhale, twist towards the right. Try to keep your neck in line with the spine, so try not to let the head hang down. Top arm can go up or stay on the leg. Breathe here. Also, make sure not to dump into the bottom shoulder. So push into the bottom hand so you have a lot of space in between the shoulder and the ear. Good. And then hands down. Now start to do a couple little pulses and just opening up the right leg, coming into a little lizard pose. Make sure, again, to keep the knee right on top of the ankle, all four corners of the right foot pushing down. If it's available to you and it doesn't cause pain, you can come onto your forearms, but if it does cause pain, please skip. And then slowly come back up to the hands and knees. Please feel free to take a child's pose or down dog, or let's move through a vinyasa here. So coming to a modified plank with the shoulders past the wrist, lower down as you exhale, uncurl the toes, inhale, chest forward and up, pushing into the knuckles, shoulders away from the ears, cobra, opening up the heart chakra, exhale, come down, curl the toes under, inhale, try to push up in a straight line instead of rolling up, and then exhale, downward facing dog. The Sanskrit for downward facing dog, don't worry, I won't quiz you later, but the Sanskrit, especially if you're thinking about one day going through a teacher training, it might be a good idea to try not to let these words just go in one ear and out the other. I know that's how it used to be for me, but it's Adho Mukha Shvanasana, so three separate words. Good, and then come back down to the hands and knees and rise up tall onto the knees. Bring your left leg forward, your left foot forward. Keep the back toes curled under or uncurl, whatever feels better for your knee. Lengthen the tailbone down and then push the left knee forward so it ends up right on top of the ankle. Good, hands to your heart, stay there or arms up overhead and wrap the shoulders. Breathe here. Really lengthening the tailbone and then lifting the entire rib cage up. Relax the shoulders. Relax the face. I am grounded and act from a place of love. Remember, nobody has to throw, your off, throw you off your center. Nobody has the ability to throw you out of alignment unless you allow it to happen. You know who you are. You don't need to let anybody else affect that. 
and then slowly bring the right hand down to the ground, left hand to the left knee, turn, walk the left foot over to the left and turn the toes out slightly. Left knee points in the same direction as the toes and is right above the knee. On your inhale, lengthen and exhale, twist. Really rolling the top shoulder back. Remember not to dump into the bottom shoulder. There's a lot of space in between the shoulder and the ear. Left arm can go up and breathe here. Neck in line with the spine. Try not to let the hips fall off to the side. Breathe. Anytime your mind wanders, come back to the breath. You can use your ujjayi breath if you're familiar with that, but don't stress yourself out about it. Remember, that's just valving the back of the throat. That sound does not come from the nose. It's a sound. And then slowly release. Now here, keeping the hips square, do some little pulses again or come down onto the forearms. It does not make you a better or worse yogi depending on where you go in this pose or any other pose. Don't let your self-worth come from how far you can go in a yoga pose. That is not the goal. Awesome. Now slowly come up and make your way back to modified plank. Push the shoulders forward so they're past the wrists. Inhale here and exhale. Lower down. Squeeze the elbows in. Chest lands before the belly if at all humanly possible. Uncurl the toes. Inhale. Chest forward and up. Shoulders away from the ears. Exhale. Lower down. Curl the toes under. Pull the shoulders away from the mat. Inhale. Push up in a super straight line. I know it's hard. You'll get it. Exhale. Hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Breathe. Remember, bend the knees a little bit so that you can really push the hips up and back, being in a straight line from the wrist all the way up to the hips. What's the name of this pose again? Adho Mukha Svanasana. And slowly walk your feet up towards your hands. Bring your feet as wide as your mat for this one and turn the toes in slightly so the outside edges of the feet are parallel to each other, hands to your shins. Inhale, reach the heart forward, bend the knees, interlace your hands behind your back, exhale, fold, maybe reaching your arms off of your back and overhead. If you can lift them up pretty high, try to bring the palms to touch. If not, that's okay. Hold and breathe. I like to pulse a little bit on the inhale. I like to lengthen the spine on the exhale. I like to fold a little bit more. And then let the arms hang down to the arm, down to the ground like ragdoll arms. Feel free to move a little bit from side to side. Good. Now, inhale, come halfway up to your monkey pose. So wherever you need to go to a flat back, you might have to have your hands on the shins. Totally fine. On your exhale, hands to the hips, bend the knees. Inhale, rise up with the flat back. And exhale, circle the hands together in front of the heart into prayer. Breathe here. I am what? Grounded and act from a place of love. That's right. Because love really, that's all that matters, isn't it? All right, bring your feet together and your arms down by your sides. Big toes can touch if possible in Tadasana. I really like the big toes to touch. But if you feel really wobbly or if your legs are not letting that happen, totally fine, doesn't matter. Separate your feet up to two fists apart, okay? One or two fists apart, whatever feels good for you. But don't bring them super wide, okay? That's not gonna be as grounded. All right, now really focusing on pushing into all four corners of the feet to engage and to start to balance, bring balance and strengthen the root chakra, muladhara chakra, the base of the spine, okay, down by the perineum, grounding down. Make sure not to hyperextend or lock your knees. That's not going to let the energy flow through the body, through the legs. The energetic pathways in the body are called nadis or little rivers. And where those little rivers intersect, that 
those places are the chakras. Okay, so exhale, ground down. We're just gonna move through two slow sun salutations. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead, lift your heart. Exhale, fold. Feel free to bend the knees so you can really tip the, the pelvis and point the tailbone up. Let the head hang. You don't have to touch the ground. Inhale, come to your monkey. Reach the heart forward, maybe hands on the shins. Bend your knees, place your hands down. Exhale, step back to plank, top of a push-up. Inhale, push forward, shoulders past the wrist. Knees can come down or stay up, but chest needs to land first. Exhale, lower down. Chest lands first, elbows in. It's, it's okay if that doesn't happen, but work on it. Don't cheat yourself. Curl, uncurl the toes. Inhale, chest forward and up. Bhujangasana, cobra. Exhale, come down, curl the toes under. Come on, let's go to the knees and lift the belly first. You got it. Do a couple little push-ups. And push up and back downward facing dog. Does it hurt to work a little bit around the holidays too? Get rid of some of that stress and maybe burn off some of those calories from the extra goodies that you're having. Instead of feeling guilty about it, just get to your mat. That's all. Awesome. Now walk the feet forward. Inhale, halfway up monkey pose. Exhale, fold over the legs. Ground down, look out. Inhale, rise up. Palms touch overhead, exhale, hands to the heart, and breathe. <sighs> Again, anytime, feel free to exhale through the mouth, let it go. During a yoga practice, you are working energy up to the surface. You're working those things up to the surface that you no longer need, so let it go. If you need to cry, if you need to laugh, if you need to yell, go ahead. I can't hear you, so go ahead and do it. All right, so exhale, ground down all four corners of the feet, strengthening Muladhara Chakra. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Inhale, monkey pose, Ardha Uttanasana, so half forward fold. Exhale, walk back to your plank, top of a push-up. Inhale, push forward, knees can come down. Exhale, lower down, rub your sides with your arms all the way down. Uncurl the toes. Inhale, chest forward and up, cobra, knuckles are pushing down. Exhale, lower down, curl the toes under. Inhale, push up in a straight line. Exhale, hips up and back. So the cues that I'm kind of yelling at you, I want you to take seriously because so often it just goes in one ear and one out the other because I know it's hard. You don't want to do it, but do it anyway. Try anyway. We're in downward facing dog in Sanskrit, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Say it with me. Adho Mukha Svanasana. All right, now walk your feet forward. Big toes touch. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold over the legs. Ground down into your feet. Look out. Inhale, rise up. Palms touch. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sit back into chair. Have your palms touch overhead. Inhale, lengthen the spine and exhale, fold, straighten the legs to where you can comfortably. Inhale, come to your flat back monkey pose. Exhale, step back to plank. Please feel free to skip this vinyasa and just go to down dog or inhale, push forward, knees down. Exhale, lower, uncurl the toes. Inhale, cobra pose, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, down, curl the toes under. Inhale, push up straight. Exhale, hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Stay there or big toes can touch and lift your right leg up towards the sky. Keep the hips square for this one, so try not to open up just for now. Inhale, lift it up a little bit higher if it's available to you. Exhale, bring the foot through, low lunge. Maybe you grab it, bring it through. Whatever you got to do is fine. Flatten the back foot and turn it out a little bit. Windmill the arms up and bend into your right knee for Virabhadrasana 2 or Warrior 2. Right heel in line with the arch of the back foot. Back toes turned in slightly. Level out the hips, so try not to have one hip higher. Level them out. Keep the right knee directly on top of the ankle and pointing straight forward. Don't let it come in. Now from there, open the back hip only as far as you can go without letting that front knee turn in. I know it wants to. Arms up, parallel to the ground. Relax the shoulders away from the ears and breathe. 
I am starting to sweat. Hopefully you are a little bit too. I am grounded and act from a place of love. Now reverse warrior, so left hand to the left leg, right arm up and overhead, reach it back. Come back to your warrior two, straighten the right leg, reach forward, right hand to the right thigh or cat or shin, left arm straight up. Try not to place the hand on the knee. Breathe here, really letting the top rib cage melt down so that your spine is straight instead of rounded. Reach the crown of the head forward. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Neck in line with the spine. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Bend the right knee slightly, inhale, rise up. Bend the right knee more deeply, exhale, windmill the hands on either side of the right foot. Downward facing dog, stay there, child's pose or vinyasa with me. Inhale, come forward to plank, knees up or down, exhale, lower. Uncurl the toes, inhale, chest forward and up, bhujangasana. Exhale, come down, curl the toes under. Inhale, push up in a straight line. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. So you don't want to move on to the next variation until you can comfortably and correctly do the variation before it. Okay, so in the vinyasas, you want to keep your knees down until you can do it with correct form. Stay here or left leg straight up to the sky, squaring off the hips. Lift it up a little bit higher, inhale, exhale, bring it through, low lunge, turn the back toes in slightly and flatten them. Windmill the arms up, warrior two. Vira Bhadrasana two. So Vira Bhadrasana, that's all one word. Okay, turn the back toes in slightly. Left heel in line with the arch of the back foot. Level out the pelvis. Left knee right on top of the ankle. Arms up, relax the shoulders and breathe. I am grounded and act from a place of love. You're a yoga goddess, of course you do. Right hand to the right leg, left palm up, and then reach up and over reverse warrior. Then that's not to say that if sometimes you get out of alignment and you react, it's okay, okay? You're still worthy, you're still good, it happens. Then you get back to your meditation cushion or your yoga mat, okay? Come back up, straighten the leg, inhale. Exhale, reach forward, bring the left hand down and right arm up. Ground it down. Inhale, rise up, bending the knee a little bit, bend the knee more. Exhale, both hands down, plank, push forward, knees can lower down. Inhale here, lengthen the spine. Exhale, lower. Uncurl the toes. Inhale, chest forward and up. Exhale, come down, curl the toes under. Inhale, push up and exhale, push back to your hands and knees, and then just sit all the way back onto the heels into a pose called Vajrasana, Thunderbolt Pose. So in this pose, your legs are together, your toes are uncurled, and then I usually have one big toe come over my other big toe. That just feels good for the feet to turn in slightly. If you're just like, um, yeah, this is not gonna happen for my legs, that's fine. Just come to seated or child's pose or even downward facing dog. Close your eyes, have your palms down on your legs. Really grounding down. So this is a good grounding pose. Grounding, again, everything from the belly button down. Imagine that timer, that hourglass just filling, filling, filling in the lower body, lengthening the upper body. Let your lips form a slight smile. Don't worry, we're not done yet. But I want to take a moment to tune back in, check back in. How are you feeling? And it's okay. It's okay how you're feeling. If you still, for some reason, feel a little anxious, girl, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. Let yourself feel it. And then let it go. Again, cry, scream, laugh, 
yell, whatever. I also have a yoga for anger flow. <laughs> if you need that, go look back at it. All right, so now let's come back to downward facing dog. I'm just gonna have you stand up for one more moment. Just walk your, do walk your dog for a sec. And then walk the feet forward. Big toes touch your feet a couple inches apart. Inhale, reach the heart forward. Exhale, fold, ground down. Look out in front of you. Inhale, rise up with a flat back. Palms touch overhead. Exhale, hands to the heart. Arms by the sides for Tadasana, standing mountain pose. Lift the toes, spread them apart, grip them down, and feel all four corners of the feet. So you can go to the outside and inside of the feet a couple times and just feel that and really push down. Let the toes come back down to the mat. Don't hyperextend. Everything from the belly button down, grounding. From the belly button up, rising. Let the shoulders relax. I am grounded and act from a place of love. Be say it until you believe it. And when you don't believe it, say it again. All right, so let's come into tree pose. So have a strong base in your right foot. Lift the toes, spread them apart, and grip them down. And then bring your, have those toes and the knee pointing forward and bring your left foot to the inner calf of the other leg. Okay, so you can have the toes down like a little kickstand. If you really want the most benefits from this pose, it's a really good pose at building bone density actually. So then you wanna bring the foot up to the calf. It's gonna have a lot more of that bone building um, activity here, but you can place your hand on a chair or the wall, whatever. Okay, so stay here. Or if you're feeling great, that's easy for you, then bring it up here. If you feel challenged on one of those first variations, good for you. You don't have to go any further. You're lucky. And then bring your hands to your heart. Reach the crown of the head, the back of the crown of the head up towards the sky. Now a little trick here is to push the leg into the foot and the foot into the leg. So pushing them towards each other. Now you might really feel like you're going all over the place on the standing foot. That's okay. Hands can be at the heart or Grow your branches up. Roll the shoulders away from each other. That'll open the palms. Breathe. Balancing poses are great to practice when you're feeling ungrounded because it gives you an opportunity to practice getting grounded. And tree pose is called Virkshasana. That's one word, Virkshasana. All right, hands to the heart. Let's switch it out. Walk it out. Ooh, I really felt that one strengthening the foot, especially. Strong base in the left foot. Lift the toes, spread them apart, grip them down. Find your gazing point. Get like crazy about looking at your gazing point. Okay, and then turn the right knee out. Bring the heel up by the inner calf or walk it up or bypass the knee. You don't want to go on the knee, the inner thigh. Leg into the foot, foot into the leg. Everything from the belly button down, grounding down, belly button up, rising up hands to the heart. It's okay if you fall out of it. Again, don't base your self-worth on falling out of a freaking yoga pose. <laughs> it doesn't matter, okay? Just come back to it. No judgment. Grow your branches if you wish. Let your lips form a slight smile. This is fun after all. You have the ability, your body can get you to your yoga mat. That's definitely something to be grateful for. And your mind helped you to get there as well. <laughs> Good, hands to the heart. Release, oh, walk it out. Can kind of move the foot all around or come like this, bringing the toes under. Whatever would feel good after that pose for your feet. And then make your way back up to the front of your mat, coming into your final Tadasana standing mountain pose. Exhale, ground it down. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come to your monkey pose, flat back. Bend your knees, plant your hands. Exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up and back. Now coming into pigeon, exhale, bring your right knee to the outside of the right wrist, swinging your foot over to the left. 
uncurl the toes. Now for this one, we're just gonna stay a little bit tall. Now try to keep your hips square. So try not to fall out to the side. Keep your hips square. Don't worry, we're gonna do this twice on each side. Breathe. Back leg is parallel to the long side of the mat. Your front shin does not need to be parallel to the front of the mat, contrary to popular belief. You don't need to grab the foot and yank it up. Ouch, that is just asking for a knee injury. If you need to feel more sensation, curl the back toes under and walk the front knee back. Great, downward facing dog, walk it out. And big toes touch, inhale, left leg up and back, exhale. Bring it through, left knee to the outside, foot swings over to the right hand. Don't, don't grab the foot, yank it up. I know you want to. Curl the back toes under and walk it back. Keep the hips square. Back leg, again, parallel to the long side of the mat. I sometimes like to find a little bit of movement here. I think that feels good. If you don't think it feels good, then don't do it. Totally fine. Downward facing dog. Walk it out. The next round we'll stay in it a little bit more, but before we do, come forward to plank, knees down, lower to the belly. All right, now come on to the forearms for Sphinx. Bend the right knee in. Bring the left forearm in a little bit. Reach back and grab the toes. If this isn't possible, maybe you can grab your pants. Maybe you feel enough of a stretch coming here. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Wherever you're feeling a stretch, awesome. So grab what you can. If you can grab the ankle, flex the foot. Try not to let the knee splay out. Keep the knees parallel to each other. Now, if you're still not feeling a stretch in the quad, bring your forehead down to your forearm. Think about tucking your tailbone a little bit and reaching your right knee back. And switch it out. My kitty is almost done with his bath. <laughs> Just almost. Now again, you go to where it feels good for you. All right, now, arms by the sides, rest on one cheek. Just let the shoulders melt down. <sighs> Take a couple cleansing breaths in through the nose and then out through the mouth. You can sigh. Listen to Kitty. He'll show you how to do it. He's kind of a loud breather. Okay, good. Now come back to center. You can come onto the forehead or you can come up for a second to Sphinx and watch me. Hey bud, you're kind of in the way. Okay, bend the legs a little bit. And then you can reach back and then grab what you can, both feet if possible. If you can grab the ankles, flex the feet. Tuck your tailbone a little bit so your booty's not popping out because when your booty's popping out, that can cause some low back crunchiness, which we don't want. And then start to pull your feet back, lifting your heart. Now in this pose, I tend to rock a little bit. My belly lifts me up as I inhale, and then I come down as I exhale. Bless you. We're only gonna do this once, so a few more breaths. I know he just wishes I'd just hold still <laughs> one more breath, and then carefully release is kind of like a slingshot. Arms by the sides, rest on the other cheek. <sighs> Now, I promised you one more pigeon, so I gotta hold my promise. All right, so however you can get it there, right knee to the outside of the wrist, you can come into it from down dog or like I did from the hands and knees, whatever floats your boat. And then walk it back to where you feel a, a good stretch. Remember, we only wanna feel sensation, never, never pain. Okay, so square off the hips, back legs parallel. Come down onto the forearms only if it feels amazing for you. Okay, if it's making you make a funny face or hold your breath, probably gone too far, okay? You can stack your fists, place your forehead onto the fist. I love having the forehead on something. It really adds to the grounding. Just soften into it. Okay. 
Relax the face. Relax the jaw. Good, and then let's slowly switch out of it. I already feel different after doing that one. I feel a lot more grounded and calm. All right, left knee forward, foot over to the side. Don't yank it, don't yank it. Walk the other foot back. Come down to where it feels good for you. If you stacked your fist, step, stack the other one on top this time. Relax the face and the jaw. And then however you can, come up to seated. Coming to an easy cross-legged pose, pull the flesh away from the sitting bones. Palms down on your knees. Belly button and down, heavy. Belly button and up, rising, expanding, uplift. Face is soft, jaws relaxed. Let your breaths get longer. Especially the exhales. So really deep inhale and the longer exhale. Watch the breath as it moves in the body. And out of the body. Upper body expands as you inhale. Lower body grounds as you exhale. On your inhale, I am grounded. Exhale and act from a place of love. Repeat that. Slowly lower your head, blink your eyes open, and then gently lay yourself all the way down onto your back. Knees bent, feet on the floor. Let's move into a final twist. So bring your arms out to the sides, shift your hips over to the right, and let both knees fall to the left. The knees can stack or whatever feels good. You don't want to be holding on to anything here. Just really relax. Shoulders on the mat, eyes closed. Face is soft, no tension. side. Shift your hips to the left, knees to the right.
center. <sighs> Knees into the chest, double knee hug. You can rock a little bit from side to side. And then happy baby. So lift your feet up towards the sky like they're flat on the sky. Bring the knees down towards the armpits. Elbows go on the inside of the knees and then grab the outside edges of the feet and pull the knees down towards the armpits or towards the ground beside your armpits. If your booty's rolling up, try to lengthen the tailbone down onto the mat. Shoulders are plugged in, breathe, heads on the ground. You can always do this one leg at a time if that's a little bit much for you. Again, no judgment. Okay, we all do different things with our body throughout our days and throughout our whole life we've been doing different things. So if your pose doesn't look like somebody else's, doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter. All right. Bring them into your chest one more time. Give them a squeeze. Reach both legs up towards the sky. Doing legs up the wall pose without the wall. Hold here, knees can be a little bit bent. And bring your feet above the chest more so that you're not using tons of muscles to keep your legs up. <sighs> tons of energy, rather. A lot of muscles are working, but you don't want to use a lot of energy. down your knees in and bring your feet down to the ground one at a time extend your legs out one at a time roll your shoulders under your ears arms hands a little bit wider than the mat feet about as wide as the mat let the feet fall out to the sides close your eyes if you have an eye pillow handy or maybe a sweatshirt or something or a blanket from your couch place that over your eyes <sighs> palms are open breathe Let your, the back of your body get heavier and heavier. So now when thinking about that hourglass, the bottom of the hourglass is like the back of the body. So everything that's touching the earth is getting heavier and heavier. Everything on the front of the body is getting lighter and lighter, expanding. And then just let it go. Let yourself drift off to that place right before you fall asleep. There's nothing you need to hold on to. Let those thoughts go. Let it go. Let go of any tension in the body, especially the face. Let the back of the body get heavier and heavier. Enjoy these last few moments of Shavasana.
Start coming back to your breath. Start coming back to your breath. And wiggle the fingers and toes. And roll your head gently from side to side. And do a full body stretch. And just start to notice how you're feeling after this practice. Start to bend your knees and place the feet on the ground. Bring your feet wide, as wide as the mat and the knees together. Arms can be by your sides or overhead. And again, just noticing, noticing how your body's feeling, your mind and your emotions. And when you're done with this practice today, let me know in the comments how it made you feel. Or maybe some new things that you learned from your practice today. I would love, love, love to hear and the rest of the community would love to hear as well. Roll onto your right hand side using your right arm for a pillow. As you breathe, feel the lungs and ribs expand in every direction, the front and the back and the sides. And then slowly push yourself up. Let your head be the last thing to come up. Come into an easy cross-legged pose and put your non-dominant leg in front. Pull the flesh away from the sitting bones. Again, hands onto the knees, palms down, lengthen the spine. Come back to your breath. And circle your hands together in front of your heart into prayer. Let's just close our practice and close the sacred space that we've created together with one ohm. Take a deep breath in. Ah. And then bow your head and bring your thumbs from your heart center up to your third eye, acknowledging the energy that's within you, around you, connects us all together and never goes away. That energy within me acknowledges the energy within you. Have a great day. Namaste. Okay, Yogi, so I hope that you learned some new terms today. I know that I went over the Sanskrit a little bit and I went over the Muladhara Chakra as well as the Heart Chakra, which is called Anahata. Please don't forget to leave a comment and also please, please, please subscribe and turn on the little bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. I really am so excited to be helping you on your yoga journey. Have a great day. Bye. Namaste.